fight Amanda, I face fight Amanda yesterday on the stream as well. Can't remember if she was playing good or not. Uh, the weird rogue weapon, like, Perdition's Blade, or, like, Assassin's Blade? I don't really want two Crazy Deadly Shocks. Traveler. Yeah, that's, uh, I think Perdition's Blade, right? What's the idea behind that? This hand is, uh... Great at the moment, but it would be fine if we drew into like an eagle horn bow soon. Yeah, I don't see Perdition's Blade very much. I think it used to be in like the Tempo Rogue that people talked about a lot in like the very early days of Hearthstone, but it didn't really survive the test of time. Snipe's probably coming out next turn to try to catch the Auctioneer on Curve. Although, she doesn't have coin, so maybe it's technically better to wait or something. Actually, maybe I'd rather try to catch it with the mis catch this SI7 agent with misdirection. And then focus on trying to get... Um, the auctioneer on the turn that it wouldn't require prep with conceal. I think people are starting to get the idea that playing really aggressively against this deck works well. Morita can't just let that SI7 live and keep doing 3 damage a turn. Um, I have 2 deadly shots. I probably don't need both together with a snipe, so I can probably afford to spend 1 here and keep those kill commands for base damage if I ever draw a beast. Yeah, I love how it kills the minion too. Whenever you have their opponent has the blade out, that uh, is a really important thing to know, actually, because that was like one of the main reasons that I just made that play. Perfect. That's exactly what the snipe is for, and she conceded, which was honestly a bit premature, but I know it's very painful when that happens. All right, rank 12. Kind of got a freebie there by timing the snipe, right? I wonder if uh, she's going to try to counter Q with, um, like, Druid or something like that. That was a, a premature concede. She had me down to 15 health. She didn't need that much damage, and like I wasn't really showing that I had a lot of damage on that. Yeah, I know. I, I've noticed that Amanda likes to counter Q as well, so I wouldn't be surprised. We've been getting some wins against Druid with this deck, although it's it's definitely harder. This deck is is very much geared to counter Miracle Rogue. Hi there, Ancient. You can have this on the Zarlene. Ooh, it's Finger Out again. We, we beat Finger Out twice yesterday. Let's see if we can do that again.
Flare is good if they um, play Conceal and it's easy enough to cycle too. So I think I'll keep that. But everything else is not great against Miracle Orb. Finger has been tough despite Miracle Ray usually being a pretty good matchup for this deck. No rush, I'm getting the Eagle Horn Bow out with this hand. Usually Finger Out plays really aggressive in this matchup. Having a charge, like not spending a charge is usually a good idea, especially in this matchup since there's plenty of 3-3s three that you want to take out early, control the board with this weapon rather than just going straight pace. It would be nice to have a secret to play for next turn. We don't have one yet. Didn't get one. I, st I don't really want to flare either because I don't have any other way to deal with them. Um, His hand's really gunked up. I'm tempted to just play Double Starving Buzzard to cycle and make him make her do something. Uh. Hmm. I don't know, just steady shot and pass. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll get about that. <laughs> it's a little sketch. This is not your typical uh, hunter deck, for sure. Wild Pyro's got good synergy with Hunter's Mark, for instance. This is not like a face hunter deck. This is, you kind of want to control the board and just do steady amounts of damage throughout it to give it a clock. And it sort of wins that way rather than just by rushing things down as fast as possible. But there's a lot of spells here. Uh, the Wild Pyro does a lot of good work against like Zoo or something like that. And even in other matchups, Wild Pyro plus Hunter's Mark pretty good way um, to take out a big minion and there's just a lot of spells in this deck in general there's 21 spells I think very few minions I think I'm okay with that play Nine, 10, 11 damage. How can I sneak some damage in here? Pretty sure I'm just better off going face here. And maybe I want to also use a charge here to allow myself to go Gladiator's Longbow. 
If he walks into the explosive trap, I would have lethal for next turn now. And I could maybe draw into it anyway. Are you saying when did I quit the game of Hearthstone because I'm playing classic mode? Is that what's up, Napoleon? Um, I mostly quit playing the game back in like 2017. I briefly came back and played for a couple months in 2020, I think. But um, I don't know. I haven't really been that into it since 2016. Classic meta has always been my favorite meta, so it's been nice to play that version of the game again. It's a pretty crazy turn, but I think it's all for naught. There we go. Beat Finger out again. Finger out's been stuck at rank 2 legend for a while now. I think we've been part of the reason for that. Hi, Icer. And, uh, have this and Sans Nickel. How's it going? And Parcheesi. What is Phaser at right now? Uh, 10. Phaser's rank 1. Oh, I see. I faced Phaser earlier. I think I beat him, actually. I can't remember. Was he playing Hunter? Maybe he was. Beast Seat Priests. More Miracle Rogue, that's what we want to see. It's honestly tempting to keep Leroy Jenkins just because that extra damage is so good against Rogue. To close the game out early. I won't need it for a few turns. It's probably better to cycle it and try to find something that helps keep me alive first. Definitely keeping the snipe though. Snipe gave us the free win against, um, oh, who are we facing? Before finger out, forget. Oh, fight Amanda, yeah. Yeah, I'll do the early tracking because I really want my Eagle Horn bow. Didn't find that though. Let's see here. I already have a deadly shot, so I don't need that. I probably just want the Leroy Jenkins for the extra damage. I was considering keeping that in my opening hand anyway. This direction is pretty good, but I do have a freezing trap. They can sometimes serve a similar purpose, so let's go with that. Still really want to find that Eagle Horn Bow. The Eagle Horn Bow is the key to this deck, pretty much. We have that Wild Pyro Hunter's Mark combo I was talking about earlier. It's not a very exciting combo for this matchup though. It's a bigger deal in some other matchups. Slow start, but anytime you're just steadily, as long as you're doing some damage each turn, you're usually feeling pretty good. Yeah, the hero power in Hunter is surprisingly strong. It just puts your opponent on a very fast clock. So now the question is, do we play Snipe now? at risk catching like an Azure Drake on five when we'd rather really catch the Auctioneer, but they can of course have Auctioneer um, prep and um, then conceal. I think because they haven't played anything yet, there's a good chance that she's just sitting on a whole bunch of stuff to play with an Auctioneer. So I will play the Snipe early. I have the Deadly Shot as an emergency backup for the following turn if I need it. So. 
it's not super risky to do it in this order. Yeah, exactly. Deadly shot's good insurance. It's better, of course, to catch the auctioneer on the snipe, because then they don't even get a single draw off of it. There's a quick test for explosive trap. And we caught an Azure Drake, which is not bad. Azure Drake is a pretty solid one to destroy with that. <sighs> so I have a problem though, which is that I have all these traps and I'm not really able to do a lot of damage with them right now because I haven't drawn the Eagle Horn bow yet. Um, I have Leroy with Wild Pyromancer. There's some sort of combo there yet, but I don't quite have the right play for that either. I think I need one more mana before I consider doing something like that. So I think I'll just do... Wait, I don't even think I really want the Explosive Trap right now either. I'd rather trigger that whenever it actually will do something useful on the board. Could Leroy Explosive Trap? Mm, nah. Uh, I'm gonna make. I'm definitely gonna play another trap. I'm trying to figure out which one to play. I think it'll probably be the freezing trap. You're supposed to play your freezing trap before you play your misdirection because they interact poorly in the other order. Although playing explosive trap after freezing trap also kind of happens in the wrong order. I guess the benefit here is that he has to worry that that's another snipe, uh, because if I played Explosive Trap, he would have triggered it and known that it wasn't a snipe. So does he try to play around snipe again? Maybe. Even if he does and gets the or even if he plays the auctioneer, it's gonna just get deadly shot. Yeah, uh, but he's just gonna get a bunch of draws off of it first. That's the really annoying part. Oh, what? All right. So I don't even have to use Deadly Shot here. I think what I prefer is to play my Leroy, play Wild Pyro, and clear out everything, and then do some face damage with it. Pretty easy to clear these out, but it does cost some mana at least. And that's mana that he can't be using to uh, do damage to me or like try to trigger this trap or whatever. He has to do something and threatening a lot of damage on board, even though it's all very flimsy. I've got a little bit of damage in my hand, like seven damage in my hands. Not that much though, I really need to draw into something a little bit more substantial. Ha, this guy's toast. Oh, at least I have <sighs> this guy's toast. Would be nice to have that wild pyro again. I'd like to do wild pyro explosive trap. So one of these is going to get bounced, which could be bad because I'll probably get the Earth and Ring Farseer back and get some more health. And then it's just a matter of what I t choose to do with the rest of this. Um, I need to get an Explosive Trap down to start doing that damage. Do I want to take the Misdirection damage now? That would do 5, 7 damage. You'd be down to 12. The next turn I could do another 2, 5, 9. I'm still pretty short on damage here. But I think that's still my best play. Eh, maybe I don't want to do misdirect though. I think I'm actually just going to take this. 
good. That's the one I wanted to see get hit. Hey there, Flash. How's it going? Welcome. Hmm. Really just threw that down, hoping not to get sniped, huh? Yeah, I'm doing well. So let's see here. Definitely don't have lethal. Explosive trap will clear out the rest of that auctioneer. She might get a bunch of draws first, but I don't know if she'll be able to find enough to do anything useful if I am able to do explosive trap and misdirect. Gotta start sending this space. I don't need this coin for much else, so I better use that to get my hero power on and set up some lethal for next turn. Iron Beak, Kill Command, Steady Shot, and Hero Power alone should be enough unless she finds her second Earthen Ring Farce here, and even then I might still get the victory because I have the Explosive Trap and the Misdirection there. Hi, Simsis. Oh, yeah, I know, you're not a real person. I don't really know how to get rid of you, though. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I'm a, I, I am a little exposed here, though. I think if she attacks with the Auctioneer, raises her blade, and then attacks... Wait, how does this work? I don't know, this is a little tricky, because it's, it's very difficult for her to trigger the Misdirect before playing um, Leroy. If she has prep, maybe she can kill me or something? Looks like she assumes that I had enough damage to kill her and conceded. She could have had lethal, I guess, if she had a cold blood in her hand and just didn't have <laughs> the speed to do it. Alright, we're in the top 10 now. Good stuff. Has everybody here been playing Classic or just watching Classic? I've really enjoyed having Classic around. So that was three Miracle Rogues in a row and three wins, right? Played Amanda, Finger Out, and East, East, East or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I remember hearing that it was going to come out before it came out, and I was pretty excited to try it. I had stopped playing Hearthstone before that for a good bit, and it's been like, before this, it was a long time since I had really played that's not very seriously at all. But it's pretty fun meta. Um, 
I really like how well balanced all the cards seem when there are people like to complain about Miracle Rogue, but it's really not. It's like the best deck, but only by a little bit, really. And there are counters. For instance, I think this counters it. I think this is the best Miracle Rogue counter I've come up with. And that's, you want something that beats Miracle Rogue once you get into the top 20 or so at Legend. Q times can be a bit long though at this rank and in Colossi. Someone will show up eventually, although it might be a rematch against like one of those three rogues that we faced earlier. If they're still playing rogue, I really wouldn't mind facing any of them again. Even Finger Out, I have a three game winning streak against Finger Out now. <laughs> Alright, who do we have? Karen! Karen plays Zoo. Like a really strange version of Zoo that's pretty fun. Um, these are mostly pretty good Zoo cards. I think I'll throw back the misdirection. But Unleash the Hounds with a Hunter's Mark and Arcane Shot for something early. Pretty good. His Zoo uses like really high health minions and health buffs to make it really difficult to clear. Um, but I think our deck still lines up pretty well against his style. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to get the perfect Unleash the Hounds off that early. I'm gonna try to manage the board a bit. Might want to coin into the Animal Companion here. Actually, I think I'll That's not what I'm trying to do. I think I'll actually just kill Command that. I don't need that for the face damage I need. I need to manage the board, and it's difficult to keep a beast down, so I'll just take the three damage on a relatively threatening minion. Now's a good time for animal companion there. Eh, all right. At least Unleash the Hound should be able to handle the back half of that uh, Harvest Golem, unless uh, it gets a health buff, which there are tons of health buffs in Karen's deck. Might be able to get it with a Misdirect, though, too. Hopefully that Deadly Shot ends up on a Doom Guard after I do some kind of Unleash the Hounds clear. It'd be nice to draw into... If I were to draw into a Starving Buzzard now, I, I would think I'm in very good shape. I think the misdirection is better than the snipe at this point. The misdirection is likely to hit the 2-1, which could clear out the 3-2, that would be great. Otherwise, it's not doing a whole lot, I guess. It does either two face damage or it damages the taunt that I'm probably gonna have to Hunter's Mark with my Unleash the Hounds anyway. The alternative is to, well, I guess I could probably snipe and misdirect, but at some point I want to start doing some face damage, right? Uh, I think I'm going to still go with the misdirection. I just hope that it pans out well. I really like that starving buzzard. Hmm, all right. Yeah, I didn't really want that to go face. Get in there and fight, maggot. Hmm. 
Hmm. I'm in a little bit of trouble here. I don't think I can wait any longer on this Unleash the Hounds. I think I'm still not going to play Snipe because I really want to try to use that Snipe as a bluff. Uh, for like a... Oh, I could have used it right there as a bluff. Eh, I don't know if that would have been very good. Hmm. If this is a Dark Iron Dwarf, I guess I'm going to have some regrets on the snipe. Mm, even that would have been nice to snipe. I might be able to still bluff the, the explosive trap. Yikes. Does bluffing even help? I don't know that buffing actually even helps me. I think I'm better off just setting up lethal. And just hoping that he doesn't have 3 extra damage, but he probably has 3 extra damage. Yep. Uh, if I had bluffed, I think he still would have just attacked. I don't think it would have done anything for me. And if I had, like, silenced one of the wolves, I wouldn't have done anything. I could have, like, deadly shot. Maybe that would have been better. But... If I had bought one turn, what was I realistically going to draw into that was going to save me? I guess an explosive trap. I would have given myself one more turn to find an explosive trap. But if you had Doom Guard, even that wouldn't have helped. I don't know. That might be my first loss to Zoo with this deck. I feel like we've been doing well against that, but we didn't draw ex any of the explosive traps, and we didn't draw the wild pyromancer, which makes it tougher. We did draw one Unleash the Hounds, but without a starving buzzard. Yeah. I'd be up for facing Karen again. Hi there, Ladybug. What have you been playing in Classic Flash? Oh man, if Karen ever plays Handlock, he'll fake out everybody on ladder. I tried that for a couple days. I, I started running uh, Aggro Shaman instead of Control Shaman. That was pretty fun. 
But once I figured it out, it was not super effective. Even alternating between the two didn't seem to be working that well. But I, I think I was maybe not using a very good aggro shaman build. Ah, oh, finger out again. Good. Handlock, midrange paladin, and hunter. I love midrange paladin too. I play that a lot. It's tempting to keep starving buzzard in on Leash the Hound since we have the combo. They just don't. Finger out never goes very wide though. I think I still don't want it. I'd rather just draw into some secrets to play with this eagle horn bow. Even Leroy. Just extra damage. It's pretty good. Deadly shot. I think I don't need this flare with this deadly shot. Game should be over pretty early, so hopefully I don't regret using that flare so early, because it can, of course, uh, cancel out the stealth from conceal. Steady shot turn two. That's a pretty good play. Okay, I think I prefer this to playing the Eagle Horn Bow because I have no secrets to start getting extra charges on the Eagle Horn Bow yet. Hey, always suffer. Be nice to have this direction right now. There's the misdirection I was talking about. I think I'll just play it before playing my Eagle Horn Bow. Could always play Eagle Horn Bow. Nah, I think I'd rather catch the misdirection right now. I have two Eaglehorn bows, so it's not like I have to be too careful with the charges on it, other than that you pay three extra mana to re-equip the Eaglehorn bow. I have the Leroy Jenkins Unleash the Hounds combo. Three, six, eight, damage, ten, eighteen. Yeah, I'm set up for a turn seven kill right now, with a lot of mana to spare, actually. Yeah, it's interesting how that works, right, Flash? It's just that your weapon is only out on your own turn. That's what that's really about. It's not about whether it's your own minion or not. Nine. I'm really close to lethal already, aren't I? I'm also close to dying.
think I need that misdirection for protection. There's a slight risk to how I'm playing this, which is that if he doesn't play a minion and doesn't take any damage from the misdirection to his face, then I will be one damage short next turn of lethal. And if I don't draw a useful card. Oh no. Oh no. Finger out, did you really dodge it? If you did. So I don't have. Oh no, I have lethal. Okay. Never mind. All right, we've beaten four Miracle Rogues in a row. Back into the top 10.